I am really excited to introduce this machine to you. Uh, as some of you know that follow us quite a bit, we just got done selling a gorgeous Singer 128-3 that went, went to some wonderful people uh, over in Michigan. And uh, as you can see in the feedback, if you've looked at our feedback, they just love the machine and they love the transaction. So this machine, as I was preparing it, as I was servicing it, I really got excited because a number of bidders missed out. I mean, you have one winner and you have a lot of other people that are bidding and only one person can win that listing. This is your second chance right here. And what a magnificent machine to have a second chance with. This is a Viking 10M, extremely rare. The only one that we've ever had in all the machines that we handle. Uh, born back in 1935. If you've never researched the Husqvarna Viking history, let me share a little bit with you. I think it's kind of kind of cool and it's kind of uh, enlightening about uh, the transition that they went through before they finally started making the world famous sewing machines that everybody covets so much. The Husqvarna Viking factory basically started back in uh, oh the late 1800s, but before that, in 1620, the King of Sweden, Gustavus Adolphus decreed a drilling and grinding plant for musket barrels to be based in uh, that area of Sweden. Uh, they went through a number of changes. They, they developed muskets. They went through hunting rifles. And finally, in 1872, the first Husqvarna Viking machine rolled off of that factory. Now, 1872 is only about 60 years prior to this machine being made. So they've got a long history. Uh, I really don't need to say much about Husqvarna Vikings. They really sell themselves, and especially a vintage one like this. And, and the thing that I like a lot about this machine, it's three-quarter size, it's compact, and it is a petite powerhouse beyond your imagination. You'll see that in the detailed sew-offs that we're going to do. But let me tell you what's on the back side of this machine that you can't see. It's a 1.5 amp original Swedish made Husqvarna Viking motor. Now you will see on eBay, if you do a little bit of searching, you'll see 1.5 amp motors being sold. They're out of China. Don't buy one. And I just have to say that uh, candidly, I don't mean to hurt any other sellers, but when you compare a Swedish made 1.5 amp motor to what's coming out of China, it's totally apples and oranges. And that's why I'm so excited to offer this machine because it has that original motor as you'll see in the photographs, I went through that motor and cleaned all the copper contacts. It's ready to go to work, and you'll see that proven in the sew-offs. Let's start on the bottom right-hand side of this magnificent machine. You can see right here, here's the original plate, uh, the, the badge, as I would refer to it, that show that it's made in Sweden. talks about the model, the make, the 10M. I haven't seen any of these on eBay. They're very rare. They're very hard to come by, especially one that is in this good of condition. If you move up the right side of the machine just a little bit, and if you saw our videos on that recent Singer 128-3, this is the same bobbin winding mechanism that you saw on that Singer machine. And uh, unlike that machine, I want to actually demonstrate how it works. So I'm going to rotate this uh, to the hand wheel with a simple movement. And then I'm going to engage the foot control and watch how this actually winds that long bobbin. I think it's really cool to watch it actually work. Here we go. So you can see as it runs, it's actually distributing that thread evenly on that long bobbin. And I'm not gonna obviously wind it up all the way. I'll stop when it gets through one more cycle. Can you believe how quiet that runs as well? And then you would simply grab it here and disengage it from the hand wheel like so. And I'm going to actually show you using a, a different long bobbin. Hopefully I've got it at the right angle for the camera. When you're, when you're setting up a long bobbin to go into the shuttle, you always want to make sure that that thread, if I can get my fingers on it, that that thread is pointing to the right, like so, that it's going to feed to the right. You're then going to take that shuttle and simply drop that long bobbin into it, like so. Then you grab that long bobbin like this, one finger on the top, one on the bottom, bring it all the way down that track. You can see there's a track on the right side of the shuttle right here. And then from there, you simply bring it back up in that single little movement. And I don't know if the camera can capture it, 
but that thread now is actually across the top of the shuttle. All you do then is simply open up the area where the shuttle goes, drop it in, and then rotate that hand wheel as you normally would to pull that thread up. You're ready to sew right after that. It's actually very simple to do. And uh, the huge advantage to the long bobbin, if the camera can kind of center in this area again, the huge advantage of a long bobbin compared to a conventional bobbin is that it will hold about 30% more thread than a conventional bobbin. What that means for you quilters and other folks that are doing long-term projects is it gives you that much more run time before you have to go in there and rewind another bobbin or change out that bobbin in any way. It's just amazing how much sewing you can do on one of these long bobbins. And also what I've found in using long bobbins is the quality of the stitch is even better than a conventional type bobbin. All right, follow me to the top of this machine right here. And you know what, one step before I do that, I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, one step before we go to the top, kind of come back down here, is I just wanted to show you real quick this very unique and simple way of adjusting stitch length. This thumb screw right here is loosened, and if you want to sew uh, either uh, smaller stitches, this has a stitch length variation of anything from six stitches per inch all the way down to 30, you're simply gonna rotate this up like so to make that stitch length smaller. So down here you're gonna be pretty close to oh, around six or seven stitches per inch. As you move it up, those stitches get shorter and shorter and shorter all the way to a point of having 30 stitches in the span of about an inch. And if you want to sew in reverse, you simply push this all the way to the top, and then when you want to resume sewing forward again, you just bring it back down into that forward range wherever you want to do it uh, in relation to your stitch uh, uh, desire for that project. Okay, so very simple to do. It also can be locked in place by simply screwing this down so that you don't have an unexpected project outcome. Okay, now follow me to the top of the machine if you will. This is obviously the spool of thread we were using to demonstrate how easy it is to wind a long bobbin. You could just as easily with technology today use this as a feed for the main thread even though the needle plate is designed for one needle not dual needles. Needle technology allows you to have an over under type needle there are also uh, oversized uh, eyes of needles, so you can feed two threads through that one needle to do the equivalent of dual needle sewing. So, not designed for it originally. Certainly, they didn't have that in mind this, when this was uh, born back in the 1930s. But with technology today, it's at least a possibility. All right, follow me over to the left. And you can see here, uh, we have our second spool of thread. And uh, in my opinion, this, this machine is actually fairly easy uh, to thread. I'm going to rotate it towards the camera just a little bit. <clears throat> you can see coming off of that main thread, we go through a single thread guide right here, down through the tension control area, up around this little loop and through the actual tension spring, up to the arm, across the face plate right here, and then all the way down to the needle. Notice underneath that presser foot how much clearance we have. It's absolutely mind-boggling. And as you see the heavy-duty sew-offs, you'll see the proof in the pudding as far as how much clearance and how much you can fit underneath that presser foot. I'm going to rotate the machine uh, back forward again. And what I want to show you real quick as well is on this particular machine, and really on all of our machines, we always like to do a creative project. This particular applique was sewed on this uh, Husking, Hus Husqvarna Viking Model 10M. And you can see here uh, a real good representation of that stitch length variation that I talked about. Anything from six stitches per inch all the way down to 30. And you can see as we go from the inside of the applique, which is actually three dimensional, I don't know if the camera can capture that or not, uh, out to the framing, you see a wide uh, representation of that wide stitch length variation that this machine can produce. And again, because of the quality of this machine, you are just as capable of generating a creative project like this as we are. And it's very, very simple when you've got the right machine. We're also going to be including, as we always try to do with our machines, 
uh, an instruction manual. This is obviously a reprint that we've had professionally bound, but it's going to walk you through the, the simple steps of operating this amazing vintage machine. And it's also going to reinforce again, and you can always go back to the video to see it as well, uh, how to wind one of those long bobbins. If you're used to a conventional bobbin, it, it sometimes can be a little bit intimidating, but as I try to demonstrate in the video, it's so simple. And using a shuttle in one of these machines is just such a delight, and they run so quietly, as you'll hear when we do the various sew-offs. But this manual will also help you to maintain this machine. Now, when you get it, don't even worry about that. We've spent about 10 hours on this machine, going through it inside and out, conditioning it, cleaning it, lubricating it, timing it, just making sure that every aspect, as you see in the photos even, all the way down to the copper contacts inside of that amazing 1.5 amp original Swedish motor, are as close to the original state that they were in when they left that factory in Sweden uh, as when it reaches your home. And this machine, is so easy to operate, but if you encounter a question or if you want to just, you know, revisit something re relating to this 10M, you can go into this manual and, and find that question and answer very quickly. Again, if this amazing machine is not enough to give you an incentive to bid, again, a 1.5 amp original Swedish motor, engineering beyond anything that I've seen and I would rank it up there with a FOF machine any day of the week, then we're going to throw in a sweet added bonus as well. This delicious chocolate, as, we, as, as we've included in a number of our different listings, originates in the European marketplace, not too far from where this machine was made. And it's just a wonderful project break. You know, if you've been working hard on a quilt or some other project, and you just need to take a break, what a sweeter opportunity than to sit down and enjoy some of this dark chocolate or this milk chocolate. So that's included just as an added bonus to go to the winner. Along with that, a while back I was at an estate sale <clears throat> and I came across this very cool uh, silver plated uh, decanter type container is how I would describe it. You can really store anything in here but we're, what we're going to be including uh, with this machine and all the other goodies are these additional needles that you can use uh, for sew-offs and for other projects that you have going on. But I just think it's uh, a really neat uh, period piece that really is reminiscent of that Swedish European culture uh, back in the day when this, was, when this machine was made and certainly back in the day when uh, these machines first started rolling off of the factory floor. Uh, in Sweden. So this will just be a fun thing to add on it as well. Make sure you check out our other videos as well where we'll demonstrate the amazing power of that 1.5 amp Swedish motor.